Jake here for American Trucks, and today I'm taking a look at the MBRP Armor Black Dual Middle Side Exit Exhaust System, fitting 2019 and newer 5.3 liter Silverado and Sierra 1500s. I think we can all agree that we love a good exhaust system, especially when it's attached to a big V8 like GM's 5.3. But spending a fortune on an exhaust just isn't in the cards for everyone, and going with a less expensive option runs the risk of getting less than desirable results. That's where the system from MBRP comes in. It gives you a cool aesthetic, great sound, and tolerable volume, all for an affordable price. And as such, it's gonna get a three out of five on our loudness meter, which makes it a perfect upgrade for a daily driven truck. Now, it's no secret around these parts that I like what MBRP does with their exhaust, especially when it comes to the truck market. You'd be hard pressed to find a better value for your money considering what you get here. Now this is a full catback system, so it's going to retain your stock catalytic converters as with all other MBRP systems. And as you heard from the clips at the beginning of the video, this one does err a little more on the side of subtlety as opposed to some of the other exhausts on the market. It's a definitive change over stock and it's gonna bring more of that trademark small block Chevy V8 rumble at idle and a sound that's closer to that of a stock Camaro when you really lay into it. Though it doesn't produce enough noise to get your neighbors too riled up, it is gonna get your truck noticed. Now inside, of course, you can expect a bit more volume than stock, but it's not gonna be obtrusive in any way. It's just a nice low rumble when you're out cruising around and a bit more whale when you bury the pedal. One thing that is cool that we see included here is this J-pipe or Helmholtz resonator. So this works as a resonator, but it's designed specifically to cancel out drone. So any of those weird noises that you get, any kind of dissonant frequencies, not gonna be a problem with this system because of this Helmholtz resonator, also known as the J-pipe. So this makes the system perfect for a truck that sees daily driver use or a lot of highway miles. So you're not gonna have to deal with those drone issues like you might with some other more budget-friendly systems. And I think that is a really nice feature to see here. Now the muffler does have some baffling inside to help keep things more subdued as well. And again, help stave off that drone that we were talking about a moment ago. So between the two of them, it's gonna be pretty helpful, especially when cylinder deactivation mode kicks in. Now part of that additional sound in the cabin too is also where this exhaust exits. This is a middle side exit setup, meaning that it's gonna exit and dump just ahead of the passenger side rear wheel. So it is closer to the cabin of the truck than your factory exhaust. However, gives it a cool hot rod type of look, which personally I'm a big fan of. I like these types of setups where they exit right before the rear wheel. I think it looks cool. Plus you do get some cool tips to cap everything off. Now these are finished in a nice texture black and you've got this big embossed MBRP logo on the outside as well. We'll talk more about the construction though in a moment. Now the construction here is all mandrel bent aluminized steel, so you get excellent flow in addition to some protection against corrosion and rust, though not necessarily as much as a system made from 409 or T304 stainless. Aluminized steel is suited best for trucks that are gonna see not a lot of wet or salty type of weather. But the pipes after the muffler here are also finished in this same really cool high temp black powder coat that you see on the tips. Now whereas most companies are just gonna do the finish on the exhaust tip, MBRP did this whole section. So everything from the muffler back to the tips is gonna be covered. It's a really nice finish and it's gonna lend itself to a bit more of a subtle look, especially if your truck is a darker color. It's a cool, unique touch and I think it just adds that little extra something. And of course, you get those four inch black coated dual wall T304 stainless tips with the MBRP logo stamped on it to cap it all off. Pricing comes in around $700 and that does put it closer to the lower end of the price spectrum when it comes to catbacks for this Genesis Silverado. And for what you're getting here, I really do think that this is a good value. Between the muffler, the pipes, the tips, and that Helmholtz resonator here, you've got a lot going for you in this system, and it's gonna come in at a very good value. So if your build is a little bit more budget focused, but you still want that cool sound and look, this is gonna be a great choice for you. Insulation is gonna come in at a two out of three on our difficulty meter, and it should take you about two hours to get everything buttoned up. Exhaust, of course, can be a little finicky to work on because most of us don't have access to a lift at home, but it is certainly a job that you can do yourself whether you've got a lift or not. This is a totally bolt-on system, so there's no modification needed to your truck, but you may need to make a cut to the extension pipe or use this extender here depending on the size of your cab or bed. However, it is just one cut to the new exhaust. MBRP includes instructions on exactly how to measure that out. Plus, we're gonna show you right now. So with that, why don't we go ahead and jump over to the install bay and we'll walk you through it all. For this install, you will need an impact, extension, 3 8 a half inch adapter if necessary, 13, 15, and 18 millimeter sockets, 
eight millimeter Allen head socket, exhaust hanger pliers, penetrating lubricant, and not shown here, but will be helpful is a jack and jack stands or pole jack. What's up guys, today we're gonna to be installing a new exhaust on our Silverado, so let's get started. So we're gonna start by loosening up our clamp here after our Y pipe, and we're gonna go ahead and use our 13 millimeter socket on our impact to go ahead and get that off, so then we can get the rest of the system out of the way. So once we have this clamp loose, kind of stretch it over our flange here. Go ahead and keep it on our Y pipe side because we will reuse that for our new system. So now we can go ahead and begin removing our hangers from our isolators. We're going to start right here after our cross member on this first one. So we'll grab our exhaust hanger pliers and go ahead and pop this out. Now we've got that out of the way, we'll go ahead and keep moving down. So next we can go ahead and remove our two hangers that are right after our muffler from their isolators. Now we do have a pole jack in place holding our muffler up. That's always a good thing to have. So we'll go ahead and again use our hanger pliers to go ahead and work these out. Go ahead and push that out of the way. Get this other one here. Okay, now that we have those off, we can go ahead and remove our rear hanger. And we can go ahead and get our rear hanger out of the way. You do want to support your tailpipe and overaxle section while you remove this. Even with the pole jack, this will want to come down. So now that we have this out, our exhaust is completely free and it's supported by the pole jack and our cross member up front. So now we're going to go ahead and lower our pole jack down. And we can go ahead and support our exhaust and get our pole jack out of the way. Now it is always a good idea to have a second set of hands to help you out with this, just because it is kind of cumbersome. Fish it back. Just far enough to get over the cross member. And then it'll come down. It can come back forward. We will need to rotate it a good bit. Now we have it fished over our axle and you want to be mindful of your brake lines on your rear end. So then we'll come straight forward with it. Come down. Now we can set our factory system aside. So we'll begin our install by installing our new mid pipe and drum tube section. So we'll go ahead and slide this over our cross member here lined up and then we're going to insert our hanger into the factory isolator here. Now it's always a good idea to spray it down with a little bit of penetrating lubricant or something like that just to allow for easier install through your rubber hanger. And once we get that in place we're going to loosely install our clamp over our flange here but we're not going to tighten that down just yet. Go ahead and get this clamp slipped over. That's going to hold it in place. And like I said, we're not going to tighten this down just yet as we will need to most likely make adjustments along the way. So now we're going to go ahead and get our muffler section installed. Now, depending on the size of your truck, bed length, cab length, and all that, you may need the extension pipe. Ours does not as it is a crew cab short bed. So we'll go ahead and get our three inch clamp slipped over our muffler side here. Then we've got our pole jack in place. We're gonna get our muffler slipped over our mid pipe, just like so. We're gonna go ahead and set our pole jack underneath. This is just gonna help hold things, make things much easier for install. Again, we're gonna leave that loose for now. Allow our pole jack to hold this. 
And you do want your muffler to be installed vertically like this, as our tip outlets are gonna come out like so. So now we're gonna grab our carriage bolt and retainer plate, and we're gonna slip this up into the cross member on our frame. Go ahead and get this into place. This is gonna fish its way up through here, and your carriage bolt's gonna come out of that hole right there. Then we'll go ahead and get our isolator bracket as well as our isolator into place. Then we're gonna install our flat washer, lock washer, and provided nut. This may be a little bit tricky. Well, this bolt is loose. So now once you have your flat washer and lock washer in place, you go ahead and get your provided nut started. And we'll go ahead and tighten that down. Then we'll go ahead and get this lined up and we'll tighten this down using our 18 millimeter socket on our impact. So now we're gonna do the same thing with our rear hanger mount here. We're gonna slide our tab through this hole as you can see we have it here and just drop it into place on our frame rail. It's gonna be right next to our leaf spring. And we'll go ahead and install our next hanger bracket with our flat washer and lock washer. And once we have our hanger in place and our nut on, we'll go ahead and tighten it down again with our 18 millimeter socket on our impact. So we're gonna get our upper outlet pipe in place and to do so we're gonna start with our clamp here. We're going to go ahead and slide that onto our upper outlet portion of our muffler. And while we're at it, we're going to install our lower one as well. we'll just get these in place. Just so when we put our outlet pipes on, we don't forget them and they're there. So now we are going to give our isolators a little bit of help by spraying them down with some penetrating lubricant. This will just help your hanger rods go through brand new isolators with a little less struggle. And we'll go ahead and get our upper outlet pipe in place. Slide that on. And we'll go ahead and get this through our isolator. And rotate this up. Get it through our other one as well. This may take a little bit of effort. We'll get our rear outlet hanger in place onto our isolator. So next we can go ahead and get our lower outlet pipe in place. Just slide that into our muffler. I want to make sure that bottom's out. So before we do our final fitment on our outlet pipes, we are gonna come in and tighten down the inlet side of our muffler. So we'll go ahead and grab our 15 millimeter socket and tighten down our clamp here. And that'll just hold our muffler in place so we can work our outlet pipes around without the whole assembly moving. Now we'll get our lower outlet pipe in place. Now you are going to kind of have to pull these apart as you go up next to your upper one because these connector plates are pretty close interference. So while we get that close, we'll go ahead and pull them apart a little bit. And once that's over, it should be pretty good. And you can work back into place here. Then we'll bolt that together. Now we'll go ahead and take our provided hardware and bolt our outlet pipes together. So go ahead and slide our bolt through from the top. This may take a little effort to work these together. Once you get it through, go ahead and take our flat washer, lock washer, and provided nut. Go ahead and get our nut in place. This is kind of tight quarters and a little bit tricky, so just be patient with it. And once 
once we got it started, we can go ahead and tighten it down. Now we can go ahead and tighten this down with a 13 millimeter wrench and a 13 millimeter socket with an extension on our impact. So now that we have everything in place, we'll come back and tighten down all of our clamps. So these two here are 15 millimeters, so we'll grab our 15 mil socket on our impact and tighten these down. Other one here, top. And we already have our muffler clamp tightened, so we'll go ahead and tighten up our flange clamp up front. Now we'll go ahead and tighten down our clamp here using our 13 mil socket on our impact. Now you may notice our vehicle does have dealer equipped GM running boards on it. We are going to actually remove them before we install our tips because it is a little cumbersome and tight quarters in here with the tips. Now they are still able to be put on if you wish to leave your running boards on, you know, however you like. It doesn't affect functionality, but to get a better view for you at home, we're going to go ahead and remove our running boards. So now we can go ahead and install our tips. Slide our Rear one on first, get that set, angle right here. And we'll go ahead and tighten this down using our eight mil Allen head socket and extension on our impact. Then we'll go ahead and get our forward tip installed. And we kind of want them parallel, I mean, you're free to do Whatever you want as far as fitting these, we're just going to make ours kind of in a straight line with the body lines. Then we'll go ahead and tighten this down one as well. Alrighty guys, that about wraps up our review and install of our MBRP Armor BLK dual exhaust system with middle side exit for your 19 to current 5.3 liter Silverado 1500. Thanks for watching, and as always, for everything Silverado, keep it right here at americantrucks.com.